Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PKM Weekly. Uh, this week I thought we'd start off with Obsidian, so let's see what they've been up to this week. First up is the next version of the Obsidian Web Clipper is live, and that includes Markdown export for Claude and GPT out of the box. And the easiest way to show you what that actually means is if we go to X, and my long running issues with Substack and X carry on, so you still can't embed things. But anyway, you see Capano, he did a quick demo of the Obsidian Web Clipper, chats with Claude, chats with GPT. And if you just skip ahead a little bit, you can see here, he's chatted with GPT. You can see the um, conversation there. Click of a button and it goes directly within Obsidian and then you have the conversation, your inputs and the, the, the output from GPT. So very useful if you um, copy and include your notes from GPT within Obsidian. This just makes it a little bit easier. So thank you for that, Kipana. Staying with AI, so Notebook LM with Obsidian, uh, practical note taking and AI. Basically within Notebook LM, um, it's free and private AI apparently, uh, that basically you can import 50 sources and from that you can generate briefs, document summaries, generate an audio overview, etc, etc. So if it is something of interest to you, I'd definitely say check out this video of how to use Notebook LLM plus Obsidian and side by side, so basically you can chat with your notes using an AI tool. Well worth it if that is something that you want to do. And then an interesting one was Obsidian for the Average Joes. So I'm not a programmer, I'm not a student, I'm a 25 year old man, debatable whether 25 year old is really old, but anyway, I'm trying to get my life together and organize all the information I'm bombarded with. Uh, my objective is to have a second brain where I can organize my life. So finances, to-dos, hobbies, random notes, other important adult-like documents. How can I basically get started? And within this post, and you can see the full question here, and a lot of responses, 55 responses. A lot of them are around just get started. Uh, just start writing within Obsidian, don't get bogged down between the customization, plugins, etc, etc. Just start it and your workflow and your second brain will uh, will organically, gr organically grow. But do check that out if you are on the fence as well and if you're just wanting to use Obsidian as an average Joe, as the OP put it. Uh, great question, I thought, because a lot of people that do post on Obsidian our programmers, students, researchers, etc., etc. So it was nice to see just an average Joe posting a question of how he can get the best out of it to improve his life. So thank you for that. Next up, Logseek. So Dario, Combining Minds. He's done a few videos recently. Um, Tana, Logseek. I think he also uses a little bit of Obsidian. And basically just wanted to showcase how he uses Logseek in 2025. So the knowledge management part of his second brain. Definitely worthwhile having a look into it because he goes into the depths, what is what he uses Logseek for, what some of the pitfalls and issues that he's coming across um, currently with, within, uh, within Logseek and how he differentiates between the various different apps um, to get the best out of it. So definitely worthwhile checking out and thank you Dario for posting that. I found it very insightful. And next up, does anyone have any second thoughts on Logseek with Notion, off, Notion Offline going alpha? So Notion, as you probably all know, has starting to implement some offline capabilities, not nowhere near to the extent of Obsidian or Logseek, given that they're fully offline, but it does allow you to have your notes on the move. And the question is really, I appreciate the proprietary format, et cetera, et cetera, but would you go with Notion now that it's apparently going offline as availability? Um, a lot of the responses are around the no mark, um, and in fact, from my point of view, if you've ever tried to export Notion notes into any type of format and then re-import them again, good luck. I mean, that's a sign of a bit of a failure between Notion. But you can't even export and re-import the same files, but there we go. And the other thing is uh, Obsidian, Logseek, etc. They just use file formats which are available and are going to be around for a long time. Oops, obviously, Logseek is going down the DB route, so it is a little bit proprietary and not Markdown specific, but they are integrating Markdown export soon enough. So that will allow you just to keep the base file, the text file, if you will, forever on your machine. So definitely something to keep in mind if you are going down an online tool. Tana is up next. So Tana AI update. So they've now got Claude 3.7, GPT 4.5 and GPT 01 or 01. And they also allow 
switching between various different models at the click of a few buttons. So again, the easiest way is just to have a quick look at Bragg's video that he posted. Actually press space anywhere. As he goes through it, uh, basically just showcases that you can use oops, a number of different models at the click of a button. So well worthwhile checking that out and making use of it because it does allow just for different switching between different models. Office hours, um, Thursday 28th, so a few days time. <clears throat> uh, Bragg and Matt have got the office hours going again, so do check that out. Um, you can just register or get notified for the uh, YouTube video rather than having to go through Luma, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just, uh, just follow this one if you want to, to avoid signing up anywhere. And they've released a few things as well. In fact, it's quite a number of things again. So improved um, system menu for the Mac, added LLM model picker, as we saw. Invoke app mentions improved, handle Zoom meetings is improved, various different fixes, and also complaints about some nodes with checkbox field equals no, we're not searching correctly, and they fixed all that. So this is what's been happening within TANA over the past week. So lots of updates, lots of AI capabilities, and office hours are coming up. An interesting one though was interface fatigue. Uh, so there was a comment by an user. So after two years of TANA, I'm hitting a wall with its unchanging interface. So basically getting a little bit of fatigue or boredom from the interface of TANA. So you love the structure, but um, yeah, they need that occasional novelty to stay productive. And is anyone else facing the same issue with interface tiredness? And there are quite a few posts within here, some suggesting yes, and some suggesting no. So if you're on that fence as well, do check it out and do share your comments with OP, as I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Uh, a brief one with capacities. <clears throat> uh, they did a video of objects versus folders, why you should use one, why you would use the other one. And given that capacities is an object type based rather than folder, uh, you can basically just get an idea from the capacities point of view of why one is better than the other one. So do check that out if you are interested in capacities or even objects versus folders because it does help as well within Obsidian where obviously you can have just files or embed them within folders or how best to structure it. So it's very useful on that side of it. AppFlowy 0.8.7 is out, so lots of updates. Um, local AI is free, uh, Olama integrated, um, bug fixes, editing the toolbar so you can turn into various different things and also they're working on link improvements, Linux local AI support, AI writers and documents. Uh, you can invite guests now, or you will soon be able to invite guests and log in through a one-time password. So lots going on within AppFloy. Even more going on in Octarine of late, so a huge update. And in fact, again, the easiest is probably just to go to the change log and you can see So what I like about the updates with these apps is performance, lots of performance updates. And in fact, as soon as it loads, there is a little bit of a demo video here. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Anyway, there should be a video. Yeah, there we go. Um, a brief GIF, uh, GIF, 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 uh, here. Uh, so you can see um, basically how and what these updates mean within Octarine. So thank you for pushing the update out. And there was a lot going on there. Performance issues, uh, graph view improvements, daily desk. So basically just allowing you calendar navigation a lot easier. You can move things, um, front matter as well, properties, they're enabled. Sidebars, improvements, and uh, changes outside of uh, Octarine just basically get implemented within Octarine and various different other improvements. So if you haven't checked out this app yet, definitely worthwhile. Very similar to the Obsidian type of app and structure, but has a few things already out of the box without having the need to install plugins. So do have a look at that one if you are interested. Timer. So no release as of yet, so this one kicked up a storm within the PKM community, if you will. So nothing released as of yet, but there have been a few updates. Um, so a lot of progress was made on the app itself, so lots of under the hood bug fixes. Mobile is in the plans, but not available immediately. So yes, it's gonna be available, but not within version one. 
and iOS apps are planned, but it's going to be primarily designed for desktop use um, with some ad apps uh, that you can use it together. And then they've also finished up end-to-end -end encryption, so I thought this was quite cool of how it looked. So recovery key and the encryption key is there. So lots going on within it, just as I say, no release of the app just yet. Uh, Remnot uh, 1.19, uh, simple tables, flashcard tables and advanced tables. So lots of work going on within the tables themselves. So do check this video out for the latest updates within Remnot. They've been quite quiet of late, but they have been working on some cool stuff. So do check it out. I thought this one was quite interesting, note time, a uh, new app. So basically what it allows you to do <coughs> is take notes in a uh, easy way with basically the time time stamped directly on the side of it so you don't have to worry about capturing the time it will do it all for you so lots um, quite an interesting take on things obviously you can do it within other apps with a few click of a button of so inserting the time and date and when you take the note but i thought this was interesting given that the app is based around the timing element of it um, yeah automatic timestamps customizable tags cross-platform web app so it is up and coming, lots of de development going on. So do check it out if it is something that takes your fancy. And last up is a couple of AI-based note-taking apps, which I thought were quite interesting. I've not tried them out yet, but one was Desix. Uh, basically, see what your AI see what AI sees in your notebook. So capture your inspiration, structure ideas, and collaborate in one place. So you can see here goes to. Um, X takes a few posts, saves them automatically within the app itself, and then you can run basically AI tools on it. And what I quite liked about this one is engage with any type of information, um, articles, videos, threads, tweets, etc., etc. So that's very useful. Um, auto extraction, AI powered autocomplete, very useful. And then tailored workflow, multi window support, very useful. Fully localized data, this is why I want to give this one a try. So apparently your data stays entirely within your browser, no privacy concerns, and built-in AI agent capabilities. So definitely going to check this one out, and the pricing wasn't too bad at all. So you've got a very generous free plan, $5 for 5 million tokens, valid for 6 months, or um, $49 for the year with 120 million, or 100, yeah, 120 million tokens every year. So very reasonable in terms of pricing. And as I say, they do give a free plan to test it out. And next up was Space Duck. So make sense of everything, explore any topic, capture ideas, connect insights, research, and take action. You can try it free for seven days. So you can capture a lot of things just from the web, how it works. It will extract various different things. Uh, you've got the screenshot, the reading mode. You can connect different notes together. Oops. So sources a bit like Notebook LM, if you will. Basically import various different sources within the AI tool and explain how this works, etc., etc. And you can also create various different things in a very similar way as many of the other note-taking app tools and basically help me do a final report. And there we go. It will remember everything. And the pricing on this one as well wasn't too bad, $8.99 per month. And obviously you get the seven days trial, 5,000 AI credits included or custom pricing, obviously get in touch with them. So I might give these two a try next week and we'll see what comes out of them. And that was it for this week. So thank you very much for being here and I shall see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.